Today, I'm going to show you how to add Bloom without masking. But before you learn how to make Bloom, we got to ask ourselves, what is Bloom? Well, if you take a video or a photo of any sort of light source, you're going to notice this weird glowing effect off of it. That's, that's Bloom. So basically, the goal today is to add glow to all of these light sources. Now, it would be a real pain to have to mask every single one of these things and then apply glow to that. So instead, we're going to cheat. We're going to utilize something called keying. It's essentially just picking out different colors or brightness values within your image. So to get started, we're going to add an adjustment clip, make sure that it's extended across our entire video, and then go into Fusion. If we hit Shift Space, we can type in keyer, and there's a bunch of different keying tools that we can use. For this video, we're gonna focus on HSL and Luma Keyer. So I'm gonna add one here, and then one more Luma Keyer. So what's the difference between these two? Well, HSL Keyer stands for Hue Saturation Luminance, and Luma Keyer stands for Luminance Keyer. If I add the HSL Keyer in here, I can select the green, and it's only grabbing this green color. But if I add the Luma here, it's grabbing all of the bright points in the image. Now we don't actually have to use the Luma here. Most of the glow effects have a built-in Luma here. It's the shine threshold. If I change the select output to shine regions, you can see it's basically the same thing as our Luma here. Even the soft glow node has a threshold value that we can adjust as well. With that being said, you're kind of limited using the built-in Luma here. For example, if I add this glow node back in, no matter what I do, I can't adjust the shine threshold to remove whatever this is in the sky. It ends up taking out some of the light sources that I want, like this lamp. So the only option is to create a mask. Well, if I add a polygon node in, connect that to the blue arrow, and then just draw around the things that I want, you can see we have that selected. The only issue is that now when I apply glow, it's going to be in this area only. Switching this back to glowing image, if I bring up the gain and gamma, you can see we have this mask outline. So that's why I like adding the Luma here and then adding glow after that. Plus there's a little bit more customization here. Okay, so we're going to add two different types of bloom here. We're going to add bloom to just these light sources and then the phantom alone. So let's start with just these light sources. For that, I'm going to use the Luma here. Now I don't want this added to the main pipeline. We're going to create a separate layer here. I'm going to take the output of my media in one, connect that to the gold arrow. And while the Luma here is selected, if I hit one on my keyboard, it gets brought into the first window. From here, I can adjust these thresholds until I have just those bright parts. Now it's kind of hard to see what's going on here because of the checker underlay. So if I right click the image go to options i can uncheck checker underlay and now we have this nice contrast like i said earlier i can create a mask if i need to but the idea here is not to mask anything or as little as possible unfortunately i have to do a little bit of masking here but no worries it's not too bad if i grab a polygon node from the hot bar i can drop it in above the luma here and connect it to this white arrow this is your garbage mat to be honest i don't know the difference between garbage mat and solid mat and at this point i'm too afraid to learn so just trust me connect it to the garbage mat and then start masking just something real loose and it's good to start at the beginning of your video but i've ran into a problem it is now the opposite of what i want we're only selecting the stuff outside of the mask not a big deal all we have to do is invert that polygon node anyways like i was saying we want to start at the beginning of our video and then go until where we stop moving so right around here and i'm going to just readjust my mask so everything fits properly something like this now if you notice down here it's highlighted red and we have a little arrow this is how we can jump between keyframes and that first keyframe is at frame zero it's right here we can also see a little white dash as well so what i like to do is start at the first and last point then go somewhere in the middle i'm gonna make sure that my mask lines up perfectly and then i'm gonna go in the middle of these two points making sure everything lines up correctly we got to bring this down just a little bit and there we go same thing in the middle of these two points now 
Everything looks like it lines up fairly nice. So if I watch this back now, it pretty much lines up with just adding a couple of keyframes here. The next step is to add glow to this. Shift space, bring up the select tool page and type in glow. Personally, I'm gonna use soft glow. Now it looks like nothing has happened, but that's because we're still viewing the Luma here. So select the glow node and hit one on your keyboard. Ba bam we got some glow but nothing is getting applied to our final image and that's because we don't have our soft glow tied back into our main pipeline so if we go up here we can grab a merge drop that down below the soft glow and connect the soft glow to that green arrow hey look at that got a little bit of glowiness going on here now in my opinion this looks a little weird the bloom is kind of right but realistically our image should be a little bit darker and then we'd get this bloom because right now everything is just perfectly exposed so what i'm going to do is grab a color corrector node drop that in before the merge and just kind of crush the 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 just adjust the image so it's a little bit darker now we have something that looks a little bit more natural okay now we can go back into our soft glow and start adjusting all of these settings now the main reason why i wanted the soft glow is because it has this very tight bloom pattern but it's a little too bright over here well it has a built-in luma gear so i could mess with this luma gear here or i could just bring up the threshold just slightly and there you go it fixed the issue so that's the first way to add glow and it's going to give you the most natural looking glow however i want something a little bit more stylistic the lumic here is okay and it grabs a good amount of this green but i want a little bit more and that's where the hsl gear comes in so we're going to have a similar setup just going to drop this down here going to take the output of the media in connect that to the hsl while the HSL gear is selected, I'm going to hit one on my keyboard, and then I'm just going to click and drag on this green, selecting as much of it as I can. Now, don't worry if you select too much. You can just hit this reset button. But here's the thing. We're selecting this, and we can't really see what's going on. I mean, like, sort of. So you have two options. First one is to hit this invert button. Hey, <laughs> the other option is up here. We have these three circles. These are your color channels. If we just click it, we go into the alpha channel and you can see a little bit better exactly what you're selecting. Personally, I like to bring media in one to the second window, HSL in the first, and have this inverted. Now, one of the things that I'm missing is the eyes. And because I already selected all of this, I can't just click on the eyes. It's one or the other. But not really. If we go up here, we can see we have different eyedroppers along with feathers feel like it's pretty self-explanatory the plus adds color the minus subtracts color but the difference between the eyedropper and the feather is just softness for this i'm just going to select it and then go to the add eyedropper and try and grab as much of this eye as possible we have these weird hard edges if i zoom in here it's really jagged and pixelated and this just doesn't look good so what we need to do is fix the mat if we go to matte finesse guess what we can fix the mat i can't really tell you what to do here other than mess with literally every setting everyone's going to be a little bit different here okay now that i pulled the colors that i want i'm going to select media out one hit two on my keyboard now we're viewing our final image after the hsl here I'm going to add a glow node, except this time I'm going to add X glow. This is a plugin from reactor. It's free. If you don't have it, you absolutely need it for DaVinci Resolve. And then I'm just going to connect X glow to this merge output. So a second merge node appears. Default X glow settings aren't the best, but that's fine because we can mess with it and we get a really nice glow from it. And so you can see there's a massive difference between these two images. And yeah, I mean, we did do some color grading to it, but even with the color grade off, we still have that bloom and it just makes everything pop a little bit more. Now, this was just a quick color grade to show you an example. If I wanted to do actual color grading in the color tab, well, I can't really do that this method because the adjustment clip gets affected by everything below it so instead what i would do is copy all of this duplicate my clip right click new fusion clip go into fusion paste this stuff in here except i don't want to add everything in like we had before like this or just back to square one instead i'm going to delete this delete this and i'm going to connect the soft glow 
to this merge right here. So essentially what's happening is that we have this Luma Keyer with the glow, and now we need to tie in this HSL Keyer with the glow. If I connect these two points, we get a merge node. Now I have my glow layer in video track number two, and in video track one, I can do all of my color grading. Just as an example, I'm gonna reuse this color grade I used for my rain uh, video, and there you go. Now we have this nighttime scene with a nice bit of bloom going on. For those of you who've made it to the end, as a little bonus, we can add some lens dust. So if we go into fusion, we already have a pretty nice Luma Keyer going on. In a previous video, I showed you how to make lens dust, so we can add that in. That's a bit much. So we're gonna add one more Luma Keyer here. Connect that here. Let's view this. And now we can adjust all of these settings here until we have a uh, nice little Luma Key. It's just a nice little way to really sell that bloom effect. Anyways, that's the end of the video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or join the Discord. And either myself or one of the editing helpers can help you. Before I leave, I want to give a big shout out to the Gassy members. Keep it stinky, y'all. That's the end of the video. Goodbye.